Well, I'm out in the garden and it's really warm today. Um, first week of October, but it's about 26. It was chilly this morning. Anyway, the weather's lovely. Um, and in this bed where I planted the leeks that I showed you, I'm just going to pull a few weeds out and then I'm going to start planting some garlic. So I thought I'd show you. It doesn't take up much room, so I should get quite a lot in here. Right, I've just bought the shop garlic. I've had good results with that anyway. I don't usually buy the proper gardening variety, but I do buy the bio ones. So I know there's no chemicals on them. All I'm going to do is split these into individual um, cloves and then plant it with the pointy side up. Each one of these cloves should make me a nice head of garlic. So they reproduce themselves about 10 times, maybe more. So excuse my dirty hands, but here we are. Don't have to peel all the paper off. In fact, probably better if you leave it on. So there we have the pointy end and the flat end. So pointy end up. There were 11 cloves on the smaller one, and now this is a much bigger one. I think this cost me about €2.99 because they're bio. In total I have 25 cloves off of two off of two bulbs. So that should make me 25 bulbs. five garlic planted so next time I go to the supermarket I'll probably buy at least a couple more maybe a few more and I'll aim to plant probably around a hundred bulbs like I did with the leeks I planted about a hundred leeks and that should see me through the year now I've been editing for a couple of hours so I needed a bit of a break so I've made myself a nice coffee and it's a beautiful day out here so I'm going to go take my coffee down to the potager and at the same time I'm going to see what delights are underneath the chestnut tree and see if there are enough runner beans that I can pick for our dinner.
right, let's go and see what we can find. It looks like overnight there's been an abundance of chestnuts. Wow. Oh, chestnuts everywhere. Wow. All over the floor down here. Ah, a feast. There's a huge feast. Uh, and they're really good size for wild chestnuts, not farmed. Oh, one or two of them are still in their shells. So I'm going to have to wrestle with those. But they usually fall out of the shells and onto the floor. Ouchie. Ouchie prickly. <laughs> There's so many, oh, and they're hiding. They're hiding in the strawberries. Ouchie, I'm out. Oh. They're all in the potato bed here, look. <laughs> And they just keep coming. It's a little bit like a treasure hunt. <laughs> oh, some over there. Oh, even over there on the floor. Oh. Oh, there's even some up here in the raspberries. They've fallen on top of the, the netting. Ooh. This desperately needs sorting out this uh, fruit bed because the raspberries have grown through the netting so what I'm doing here so what I'm doing here with these raspberries is letting them fruit and then once they're finished fruiting I can snip the raspberry canes down so that I can get the netting off and I can reuse it for next year these raspberries are absolutely delicious Oh, we have some sorts of fungi, mushrooms growing there, although I wouldn't know what that is, so I'm not going to eat it. Interesting though. Uh. Well, that's not a bad haul for one morning, is it? I've been trying to come out every day or, or sometimes twice a day to pick up the ones that have fallen otherwise they get little worms in them but yeah I've picked them or oh, the squirrels get them um, we do have a little black squirrel around here somewhere that I see quite often but he's obviously not discovered these ones yet but that's actually really heavy Anyway, I'm going now, I'm going to see if there's any beans for our dinner. I can see some on here, but they're not quite big enough yet. Uh, might have to wait a couple more days. Oh, hang on. Oh, no, these are a good size. Yeah, if I just pick the, the bigger ones. Uh, no, that's too big, that one I'll do for seed. Okay. Oh, 
Yeah, there's hardly any flowers left on the beans, so I think it's all coming to an end now, unfortunately. Oh, there's a lovely one there. Well, obviously, these are the ones that have gone really huge are perfect for saving seeds. So I will just leave those to dry. Ah, yes, we don't have too many. Um, oh, hello, busy cat. Hello, sweetie. Oh, this is my neighbour's cat. Oh, she's got a nice new collar. She keeps going missing for a few days. I think she's been given the collar so that she does belong to someone. But she is so pretty, aren't you? She always comes to visit me in my garden, don't you? Anyway, back to hunting for beans. Yes, there's some little ones. Oh. Oh, I'm a little bit disappointed on the beans. Um, I do have a few in the freezer though. Well, I'm really disappointed that I didn't get many beans, although I do have some in the freezer, so if it's a night's dinner, I will put these few that I've picked along with the ones that I blanched and put in the freezer. Um, I've had another good crop of tomatoes there, and you can see the chestnuts at the bottom. I'm hoping if I zoom in that you can see how many of these chestnuts are still on that tree and just waiting to drop. Can you see them bursting out of their shells? There's an awful lot of shells. Way up above my head. They're all waiting to fall on me. Well, I'm going to cook some of my chestnuts that I've collected. And there is a lot of them, so um, if I was going to roast them, I probably will roast some later, then we'd normally cut across in the top. And I've got quite a sharp serrated knife here. Um, and you could wear gloves to do this because they can slip. It can be quite dangerous, so you need a good knife. Um, and a good surface so if you're going to roast them just put a cross in the top this will stop them exploding and make them easier to peel when they're hot and we would normally do that on an open fire but we haven't got an open fire at the moment we're we're going to have a wood burner stove fitted in our lounge soon because we had smoke escaping in the upstairs rooms so we're not we're not using the chimney at the moment and we need to get a flue fitted but anyway that aside you can cook these in the oven if you don't have an open fire. You can put them on an oven roasting tray and you can cook them in the oven. Or you can cook them under the grill. You do have to watch them carefully because they will blacken quite quickly under the grill. So I would suggest oven. Or you can actually put them in the microwave. But not quite the same as toasting them. Anyway, so if you want to do that, um, yeah, just cut crosses in the tops of them so that they don't explode. And, and cook them in the oven. I would say not too high a heat because you want to cook them until they're soft. So I'd cook them probably for about half an hour on about 160. But keep a check on them. Anyway, I'm not doing that today. I am going to boil these. So I do still need to cut through the skin. And that will help me to peel them once they're cooked. But I'm going to boil some of these because I'm going to make use them in another recipe later on and I will probably freeze some as well because there's so many of them for a future recipe so what I'm going to do is I'm I'm still going to put a cross in the top just makes it easier to start getting the peel off of them and then I'm going to pop them in the saucepan I've got here and cover them with boiling water and then I'm going to boil them probably for about probably take about half an hour but I shall test them with a knife until they're soft 
Now while we're here, this pan, um, somebody remarked on the handle, and there's a reason for this. This is an unusual handle on this pan. Well, these pans I have had for probably 40 years. These are in the UK what they would call prestige pans, and they used to have a lifetime guarantee. Well, apparently a lifetime guarantee is 25 years. And after I'd had them for 25 years, bearing in mind when I first bought them, they had wooden handles and wooden wooden knobs on the top of the lids. I didn't have a dishwasher. Most people didn't have a dishwasher. So eventually, when we did get a dishwasher, the handles eventually shrunk and fell off. So this is Tony's version of a repair. Now he's made it with the stainless steel box section. And there's a reason for that as well. There's a reason this is not round because these are quite heavy pans and when they're full up with water and potatoes and things, especially the big ones, they're very heavy. So a wooden handle would be shaped. So this is why we've gone for the square one because it gives me a really good grip on the saucepan. And this, this doesn't get hot, by the way. It may get very slightly warm, but it does not get hot. Anyway, so that was the solution to the problem when all my pans lost all their handles and they're my best pans and I've loved using them and they never stick. So I wanted to preserve them. Anyway, I'm going to carry on putting crosses in these chestnuts. Then, I'm, As I say, I'm going to boil them until I can put a knife in them and see that they're soft enough. And then I will let them cool and I will peel. So I'll show you a bit later on. Well, right, this time I've prepared about a kilo in here. And I'm just going to cover those in boiling water. Um, and cook them for about 30 minutes. But I'll test them after about 20 minutes. All right, the chestnuts have had 30 minutes now. And I've tested with the knife and they're soft. And you can see that they... They change colour slightly, they go sort of slightly pinky because they were quite white. Um, they change colour slightly. Anyway, these are cooked. This was one with the cross, which looks like it might be fairly easy to peel. Let's hope so. I've just come to see how you're getting on, Tony. Tony's painting the ceiling. So you've given it an undercoat already and cut it all in. Uh, we'll have to wait and see when it dries, won't we? It doesn't. It looks like it's going to need. Oh, it looks like it's going to need more on the end bits there. On the end, yeah. But maybe not on the actual ceiling. I don't know. There are a few little patches. Tony only likes doing one paint coating, <laughs> especially when he's put an undercoat on it. But the plasterboard soaks it up, so he's put a mist coat on. So that, the, so that uh, it seals the plasterboard, then he's hoping for one coat. Now, he's mist coated it in white. The second coat is a cream. It's a standard 9010 colour over here in France. It's quite a good paint, actually. It does cover quite well. But it's very, very slightly off-white. You can hardly see the difference. <clears throat> He has been busy. He's, he's mist-coated all of these walls and the plasterboard over there and the walls over here and also where he's done the plasterboard in, in here. There we are. Have you done the bathroom? Wow, he's done the in here as well. It's a little bit dark in here, but yes, he's, so he's mist coated all the plasterboard that he can in here. Um, yeah, he can't finish the end there until the until the shower's in. Wow, he's been busy. Oh, he's done all the ceiling on this bit as well. Playing with your tools? Is this a new one? Yeah. What have you just oiled it up? Yeah. Okay, it's not a new new one, it's a new second hand one. Yeah. Okay. 
Right, Tony's going to um, rewire the light fitting that we bought at the big <coughs> antique, uh, the big brocante in Isidan. What did we pay for this? Uh, 40 euros, wasn't that? Something like that? It's got 55 euros. I think it. we paid 40. But um, for... and the guy said, how much do you want to pay me? And I said, nothing. <laughs> and he didn't see the funny side, so we set it on 40. Right. Okay. Okay, so what have you, you've, you've loosened up these bottom bits. That's because the glass comes off. Which yes. I've, I've cleaned up the glass. That's that's good. Yes. So it has got a little chip out of it, but you won't see that once right. it's connected. Right. Glass so, and then you, then you tighten these back up. Yeah. I've already put the chain bits back together and <laughs> made a new link on the top um, because there was one little link missing. And then Tony's going to do the rewiring and put it all back together. Have you got to change the light fittings as well? Yes. Okay, so, so he's going to do that. Anyway, I'll leave you with Tony and I'm going off to do some painting. Yippee. <laughs> okay. Right, so. I thought I'd get away with just changing the, the bulb holders and um, using the same wire because it's quite a modern wire but unfortunately I've sussed out up here that over the years these wires have rubbed against the, uh, the top of the fitting and the wire now is touching the fitting so if you went to change the light bulb you might just get more new bulb in for so this has got to come out <coughs> so we'll start by undoing these now two things I'm doing this for one is that uh, Jane's agreed that I do this while she gets on with the painting cutting in because quite frankly I'm sick of it. Plus, Jane's informed me that we get money for this off of adverts. So, hence my renewed interest in doing this. <coughs> so what I've done is take that sticker off there. <coughs> and I've cleaned these faces up with a bit of WD-40. Brilliant stuff for cleaning. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna uh, get brass iron or anything like that, because once you've done that, you'd have to carry on cleaning it every now and again, and I don't fancy doing that. So there, <clears throat> I've done the rest of it, so I'm not gonna bore you with it. <clears throat> so I'm now gonna attempt to take these light holders off, the bulb holders. <laughs> also by the way if you what they say uh, subscribe to these video things apparently that boosts their rating that boosts their uh, numbers then we get more money at the appetite marks doesn't cost you anything by the way all it does is the more adverts the more prescribers you got the more money you get from the adverts <coughs> I'm thinking that's the least you could do because uh, as a rule on a Sunday afternoon I like to creep around the commerce bar around the corner and have a few beers so, if you could do that, it would be very handy. <coughs> right, that's that out. Yeah. <coughs> And I'm hoping these new fittings I've got here 
we're going to screw straight back on there. <coughs> Now increasingly, I could reuse these again, but these are a bane fixing. And to get small candle bulbs like these, they won't fit. So, and it's getting harder and harder to find candle bulbs with a bane fixing. So I'm converting them to screws, and you can get these anywhere. <laughs> And that's where she's touching the outside there, so you get a very nasty electric shock. some bozos cross threaded it as well which is not uh, not ideal Cross-threaded, nice one. Okay. Now obviously you've got four wires here. You've got a live and a neutral going to each lamp holder. So you've got four wires. Now I'm hoping I've got this antique colour, so I'm hoping to get two wires down there, but sadly that's not going to happen. I've got to do that twice, so I'll have to is up something else. Or I could reuse that. I think that's probably enough. I could reuse that. Yeah. Just make it shorter. Yeah, that might work. the edge on there. That's not good.
Nothing over easy. Yes. Okay. I've only two wires, yeah? <clears throat> Let's see. Yeah. In. Good. Yeah, I still got plenty. These are rather good. You can use uh, big screwy in bulbs, or they've got a little insert there, and you can put small little screwy in bulbs, which is well handy. Make big part. Ah, yeah. 
this. Take that bit out, screw that bit in first. That's the way forward. Screw that in first. On there. Lovely. And then that one the same. some reason I don't want to come out of there then. just a cheap fit you know it Okay. There she is. Popping that in there. So, obviously I'm not as fast as an electrician because it's not my game, but silly little jobs like this I don't mind doing. And there she is. Yeah. Put that back on. And it's ready for the light box. Yeah, they set that. Yeah. Obviously, you've got a pair of these off because you want a live and a neutral going to each bulb. Break them apart. So you want them two connected and them two connected. Okay, that's it. I've probably done this a bit too quick because James is not going to do much painting if I go back in here, so but never mind. Let's give that a straighten up. That's it. Right. Hopefully. I'm going to make a test holding my plasterboard in a minute to find out if I've got enough where I've battened it out and put uh, lagging and plasterboard on it. I'm going to suss out where I've got enough headroom to put that in. That'll go in, and the wires from the already up there are going inside of one of these. And then um, that And then that will go through there. You meant to put a bulb holder in here, but I'm not doing that. I shall make another hole in here so I can thread my wires in. And then that attaches to that. And then 
you drill a hole in there and then you put a hook <clears throat> the hook will then screw into that, into that, push them out, screw them into the plasterboard over side. That goes in here, that goes in here, and hopefully they don't fall in your head. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Oh, terrific. Okay. It's been forced on there, I think. Yeah. Nice one. Okay. <coughs> okay. These are thread gauges. Find out what thread it is. Not there. Might be there. Yeah, that's him. 1 1.25. 1.258. 1 1.2510. I believe that's a 10 mil. I'm thinking. We want a 1.25 10 mil 1.25 Where's me bit? Now we've got them back and take that tape back off. Lovely. On the side. Lovely. Yeah, just finally need to find a terminal block. Okay. Okay, voila, as they say in these parts. <laughs>
That's what the light fitting hangs on that middle bit. Yeah. It's like a plastic hook. Yeah. You can't resist it, can you? <laughs> yeah. One more tighten up. Okay. Alright, Tony's put the fitting on the bottom of that and put the hook in that the chandelier thing is going to hang on. Um, Now on the top of the light fitting is not going to go completely flush to the ceiling because of the hook and because of the little white blocks <laughs> that join the wires. We we're just wondering if we could put um, something in between. Well, I've got to have wire that in first before I can hook it off. So can you sort of see whereabouts it's going to be? It's going to be exactly. a tiny way away from the ceiling. Yes. But that is going to cover it up, isn't it? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, Can you come up with letters and pop The only other thing they used to do was put fabric collar around the wire, didn't it? Yes. You can't watch it. You can't watch it. You can't watch it. What am I doing? Probably going to fit in. Yes. You yeah, don't do it. have little screws on the metal rim that holds the glass in. Yeah. Alright, let's turn it on and do the big reveal. Ready? Three, two, one. Hey! Gives that a pretty good light as well, so I'm quite pleased with that. And it looks nice up there with the beams. So yeah, well done Tony, another job jobbed. <laughs> <laughs> 